Welcome to the Book Talk with Uplifting Impact, where we are chatting it up about my new release, Action Speak Louder. Our guest host is no stranger to DEI stories and is ready to lay it all on the table with me. Ashley, welcome to the show. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for inviting me um, and along your Book Talk series. Um, I'm super thrilled to be here and uh, tell you all a little bit about me. I'm Ashley T. Brundage, leadership and empowerment expert, and I am so thrilled about your new book, Actions Speak Louder, because actions are really where leaders make an impact. So I'm so glad that you authored this book. I'm ready. I wanted to do this because working with you and discussing these hot topics, I think, is exactly why we have to do this. excited to see you too because I feel like every time we get together we have these like awesome conversations whether they're like at nine or ten o'clock at night or like during regular business hours so now we get to have an awesome conversation with all of the wonderful people that are part of the uplifting impact community so glad to have you here (laughs) I'm thrilled I'm I'm ready to dive into these hot topics (laughs) let's go (laughs) I think my favorite, my most favorite hot topic to address is is really eliminating uh, unconscious bias experiences in the workplace. And we've had some some chats um, at a at a client of yours and a friend of mine, PNC Bank, back in the day. So I just I'm really excited to talk a little bit about mitigating and eliminating unconscious bias in the workplace. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because one of the things, and I love that you use the word mitigating, right? That you're really, when you're thinking about unconscious bias, you're really thinking about what's the management of it. And the reason why I love that you started there is because one of the things that we know about unconscious bias is you can't eliminate it, right? I mean, unless somebody has some magical, like scientific thing that they can do. Yeah. Right. Like push a button where they could, it's just not, the reality. It's just not the way that our brain works. Our brain, our brain is reliant on us being able to have some of that unconscious bias. So the question isn't ever like, how do we just get rid of it? The question really is, what do we do to manage it, right? And, and what can we do that would be really powerful and maybe different than just seeing it or not seeing it and just letting it thrive? And so I think that to me is like always such a good topic to dive into because there's so many different things that you can do when you're thinking about managing bias. And one of the things Ashley tried really hard to do in this book is to make sure that we could bring up some of those big like opportunities. So in the book, we talk about hiring, right? We talk about retention, we talk about recruiting. And what are some specific things that you can do that really help you manage the bias out of the, the equation? Yeah, I, I absolutely, I love everything that you're talking about, especially the fact that you just mentioned uh, retention before recruiting. It's like you have all the best people in the entire world who work for your organization. You made the decision to hire them. Why don't you focus first on building the relationship with them through your actions? It's just so great that you built this framework for that. Well, and I, you know, I appreciate the question around or the thought around retention too, because there is a lot of conversation. I feel like to your point, right? A lot of people are like, okay, well, we're trying to recruit. We're trying to recruit. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Right. We're always trying to look to grow. And then, but what are we doing? Like, you know, with the people who are with us and how are we making sure that they have the best possible experiences in the organization? So they're not even thinking about leaving, right? They're thinking about how they can keep growing and, and what that looks like. And so in the book, not only do I specifically go after retention, but I also talk about things like mentoring, right? What does the promotion process look like? And how do we make sure that we're not uh, perpetuating some of those like things that really keep, you know, we see this all the time, right? There's a lot of people, if you see uh, a lot of organizations, excuse me, that when you're looking at their diversity within their organization, you might see it at the entry level, but the more and more you go up in the organization, the more and more it disappears, right? We, we need to be doing things that change that trajectory. If people are coming into organizations doing well, then everybody should be able to thrive and everybody should be able to grow. That's just not what's happening now. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how, um, you know, there's everything that we have on our hot topic agenda today to talk about in our short time (laughs) is so, um, sometimes polarizing, you know, we're talking about, we were talking about unconscious bias and, 
And I know a lot of times and why I mentioned it, you know, mitigating it, right. Is, is kind of where we were talking about before. Like it, it's always going to be there, but, it, but even just saying those words sometimes gets people worked up. So yeah. what do you think about these, uh, your actions speaking louder and hitting at that, that polarization of some of these topics? How do you, what do you think about that? I think that um, oftentimes, right, when we get into these moments of like, it's either this or that and the polarization, right, creating these like false dichotomies, I think it's because we're trying to look for one winner. And really one of the things that I've been able to see in my work is that once you start take, talking about actions, right, you start talking about what are some of the things that we would do to improve our performance reviews? What are some of the things that we would do to improve retention? Guess what? Not one group wins or one person wins. Everybody actually wins, right? So if, if your organization, I don't care where you are in the organization, where you sit, whatever, if your organization was like, you know what, I'm going to start prioritizing retention. And in order to prioritize retention, I'm going to really focus on what I could do to make sure that every single employee in this organization is able to grow, right? They're able to get professional development. Uh, they're able to share what their big dreams are, and we're going to support them in getting there. Just imagine that. How would that hurt anybody? No, no, no. This would hurt, help everybody. And, and I think that's what sometimes gets lost in some of this like polarizing of the conversation is that at the end of the day, when this is done right, when inclusion work is done right, it, it makes all the boats rise with the tide, right? Not just some of them. And so, so that's how, I'll, you know, I try to help people understand is like, okay, we could spend all day debating these words or debating whatever. I would much rather spend time with you and coming up with a strategy that makes life better for everybody. How about let's do that? Yeah. Yeah. And I love you. I love when um, I'm talking to people and they use the rising tide lifts all boats analogy <laughs> because right. like literally makes me think about like what a great way to host host events is talk about events on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing an event on a boat too. And I was like literally framing that, but it's like, sometimes you have to remove people from their normal environment of every day to get them to realize that there might be a different side of the coin. And, it, yeah. uh, and just, just this construct that we, we live in this world where we think it's one option or option A or option B, the binary choices yeah. is sometimes kind of frustrating. I know I do a lot of work in this space around helping people understand um, gender identity expression. And I know that's kind of one of our hot topics on this, <laughs> on our list. Um, but, but, um, which actions do you think, um, um, support this, this topic the most? Yeah. So I think that one of the things, um, that we talk a lot about right in the book. So the book is organized essentially into what are some things that you can do at the individual level and what are some things that can be done at the organizational level. And at the individual level, I think a lot of times when people get uncomfortable, when we're talking about gender identity and expression or any kind of like identity um, uh, you know, information, right? When we're, we're talking about social identity in any form, when people start to get uncomfortable and start to get a little bit like angsty, right? It's normally because they're afraid, right? There, there's something that they're just like, I don't know, like I learned this and this is the way that I've always kind of, I've always seen it as one or the other or this or that. And so the, then it's like, wait a minute. No, no, there's a whole other thing that nobody told me and I didn't get a chance to learn and I might not know anything about. And right, like that can be kind of scary. And I, let me take it outside of just even identity. Let's think about anything that you learn, right? I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's talk about water and boats. So I was out uh, with my friends and they were like, hey, we're going to go on our boat. You know, would you like to come? And, you know, I've been on boats before, and mostly they've been in, like, lakes, like, like small lakes, you know, something like that. So, anyways, we go with our friend, and this is this big lake, and we're out with the kids. And this is when my children were very, very young. And I remember we put life jackets on them and everything. They're like, let's go jump in the water. It'll be so fun. So, we stopped the boat. The kids jumped into the water. Now, I know a lot about swimming. I can swim. My kids could swim. I've been on boats before. I've been in the lake before, right? Like, so these are all things that I had knowledge of. What I did not have knowledge of is how deep a water could, the water could be. So when I asked my friend, I was like, you know, just kind of like making small talk. I'm like, so how deep is the water? They're like, oh, this is the shallow area. I said, oh, this is the shallow area. So like, what is it like? And I'm thinking maybe they're going to say like five feet, six feet, seven feet. 
You know what they said? 70 feet. And all of a sudden, everything that I thought that I knew about lakes and boats and being out with friends and swimming, you know, right, completely disappeared. And I just jumped into the water. Why did I jump to the, my kids I had on life jackets? They had already been playing for a while. My friends had been, you know, have, have been on this lake for, for decades and their family. So why did I all of a sudden, because I was afraid. Because all of a sudden, new information was introduced to me that I had not prepared for. Mm. Right? So if you think about that same kind of analogy, and then you think about it as it relates to social identity or some of the other topics we talk about, we talk about inclusion, that's what it feels like. I, I know that feeling. Like, oh my goodness, Deanna, I thought I knew how deep this lake was around social identity. I thought I understood what was going on and where the water, you know, where, where the, the, but now I don't. You're telling me that I don't. Well, I'm about to jump into this water because I'm afraid. And that's not the way to go. What would have been much smarter is if I had said, huh, that's interesting. Tell me more, right? <laughs> if I had stayed on the boat, not got my hair messed up, you know, stayed dry, but just learned a little bit more, it would have eliminated the fear because I would have learned, oh yeah, th this water is deep. We've been coming to this lake for 40 years. You know, your kids were playing, like if I had reviewed all the facts, I would have been in a better place. And I just think that that's, I hope that analogy works, right? But I, I just think that that's kind of what happens. We get so caught up in what we think we already know that when we learn something new, the first thing is resistance and fear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's it, it totally resonated with me. And, and it's like, I, I love this moment where, well, because, of course, as an educator, right, I live in this space of helping people understand something they don't know. <laughs> they don't even yeah. know that they don't know yet. <laughs> right. Um, so action speaking louder, like, how, so how, how does that actually really address that, that, that this particular scenario, I really, I want to, I just want to want to know like the book, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think with this scenario, what it does is it basically says, you know what, let's think about not just what we're saying or let not about the things that are, you know, we're so terrified of. Let's think about what are some of the things we could do together, right? What are some of the things that we could take action on and not get so stuck in just having conversations, not to say that conversations are important, not just get stuck in, you know, making a plan after plan after plan, not to say that plans aren't important, but let's actually do something, right? Let's demonstrate that we are committed by showing what we're doing in our actions. I mean, we all know this phrase, right? Actions speak louder. Well, they speak louder, right? Because if you say that you're going to do something, but I don't see any change in you, I'm not actually going to believe you. But if I, if you say you're going to do something different, you make change, then I build up trust. You know, I, I think sometimes, Ashley, like, I, I love the words diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, justice, all these words that we use to describe our, our work. But, you know, sometimes I'm like, ah, you know, if I, if I had been in the ground floor, I think I would have tried to add in things like, I don't know, being better humans, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> continuous learning. Because those are all the things that are really at the, at the bedrock of all of those ideas and concepts, right? In order to be inclusive, you have to be a continuous learner. Yeah. To me, that's not scary. That's freaking exciting. It, it, when you are inclusive, it, it's not just being inclusive of one group or another. No, it's making you literally a better human being because you're going to be so much more aware of things that you just you just didn't know before. Yeah. My, well, so you hit on like literally my favorite part about your book <laughs> is the fact that it is not titled DEI, right? Like it's literally titled Action Speak Louder. And what did we call DEI before we had DEI? <laughs> right, right. Right? What, what, what did we it? call it? Like, <laughs> I think about this often and I, um, and, you know, and I was like, I'm a history major and like personal history and uh, the yeah. history evolution of DEI, right? And it's like... Yeah was affirmative action and equal opportunity employment. And then, and then this, and civil rights, like I'm going backwards in time, civil rights. And right. of course, now we know that as social impacts. And, but before all that, it was just leadership. Like. <laughs> oh, mic drop, Ashley, mic drop. Before all of that, it was just leadership. You are so right. I tell people this all the time. You want to see someone who's really good at DEI? Show me a good leader. Right. 
And, and, and I mean, that's literally why I love your framework. I love the book. I'm so excited to finish. Re- I actually started reading it. <laughs> I got, got my hands on a, on a pre-order, pre-digital copy. Um, I guess maybe because of my maybe. I'm a VIP. I don't know. <laughs> you are a VIP, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I just think that um, that stemming all of your DEI work around leadership actions and action speaking louder is literally the framework to follow. I mean, I'm just, I don't know. I feel like I'm running a commercial for, for your book. Wait. <laughs> We're going to have to book you to do, it, to do a commercial. It means a lot to me, but yeah, to have your support. So thank you. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm. So of course I, I have pre-ordered my copy of action speaks louder. If <laughs> Uh, if you haven't pre-ordered your copy yet, uh, there's going to be a link uh, in the show notes uh, for you to go ahead and do that. Um, I, I mean, I feel like I've been so blessed to spend time with you. And uh, I know that a lot of your fans and followers have the ability to listen and learn more about what you're doing. Can you share a little bit about what's going on with the pre-order perks? Yes. So just for a limited time more, um, if you purchase one book, you actually get access to our foundation course and you get access to the course for completely for free. So it's a self-paced course and it provides foundational information on how to deepen awareness of opportunities as it relates to what's happening within organizations. You're also going to get access to our Ask Me Anything session. Um, that is is something that we always love to do, but you know, it's one thing to read a book. It's another thing to like read a book and then be able to talk to the author about it. So we'll be able to do that session or really do a deep dive into what some of the content is you're reading and how it might apply to your own work. Um, and if you purchase five or more copies, you actually receive all kinds of other perks. All you have to do is visit our website and you go to the action speak louder page. And that's where you put in all the information that you need in order to get the perks. We also are hosting um, a private Facebook group. So if you're really, really interested and want to get involved in our last week of the the launch team, you can also join us on Facebook. So if you want to do that, there's also information in our show notes. That's so awesome. I, I feel like that I was so late to the game, but I'm like, I'm diving in. <laughs> yeah, join us. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of the launch team. Um, I'm going to uh, obviously suggest to all my followers, um, everyone who's in my Empowering Differences learning community to, um, to join and redeem perks uh, to be a part of this pre-order your book, uh, Action Speak Louder, right now. If you haven't done it, I don't know what you're waiting for. Now's the moment. You have to take action. This is a leadership action. It's a leadership moment. Uh, I'm going to get the actual physical book, and hopefully I'm going to run into you soon, and I'm going to have you sign it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, yes. <laughs> So I'm thrilled about that. Um, But no, for real, thank you so much for having uh, me on the book talk today. Um, uh, And and obviously also for all of you who are participating, please use social media, hashtag the DEI guide, um, and uh, and come back and join us uh, again. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.